At the end of May, I sent a message to the university community about the killing of George Floyd. But I want to take the opportunity to speak more personally and more fully to the students of Montclair State University about that event and its relevance to us. There are several people here who I particularly wanted to join me today, and among them is Mr. Kent Slider, the Vice Chair of the University's Board of Trustees. Trustee Slider's presence is meant to express the Board's strong support for and commitment to the issues of social justice being raised by so many voices across the nation. The community that is Montclair State University is not just now thinking about the tragic inequities of American society or the unfulfilled promises of the democratic ideals on which this nation was built. Montclair State has been wrestling with those issues for many decades. We may not have been saying the exact words, Black Lives Matter, but we have been knowing that Black Lives Matter. We have been acting from the earnestly held conviction that Black Lives Matter. Year after year, in years going back before many of you were born, I have been saying that the soul of this university, the very sacred purpose of this university is to create itself as a place where all of our students have the opportunity to fulfill their potential. And I have been saying that the population of our students must reflect the population of the state that we serve. And today, the students at Montclair State do truly reflect the population of our state. Montclair State is a truly diverse community. Not a perfect community, but one in which we are always engaged in the work of creating an environment that is welcoming to every individual. And the fact that we have achieved this diverse community and that we cherish our diversity as a great strength of the university is not just because I have been talking about it. This vision is the vision of many, many others in the university community, and they have been saying it and acting on it as well. I particularly wanted Vice President Karen Pennington and Professor Leslie Wilson and Professor Sandra Collins to be with me here today because they have been with me over the past two decades, standing by my side and contributing to the vision of what this university could be for its students, for all of you. And they have stood with so many others and they have never given up on the dream and they have led always with kindness and respect, and they have done the hard work in the vineyards of making our vision a reality. In the 1980s, when Professor Wilson and Professor Collins joined the university, there were about 800 African-American students. In the year 2000, a couple of years after Vice President Pennington and I joined the university, there were about 1,400 African American students. Today, we have doubled that number to 2,800. In the 1980s, all the students of color constituted just 16% of the undergraduate student population, and today, they are more than half. Like many of you are doing today, our generation demonstrated and marched at various points in our lives. And once the demonstrations were over, we got down to work. 
And this university was that work. And we chose this work because we believe with absolute certainty to the very core of our beings that a better tomorrow depends on the quality of education we provide to the rising generations who we have in our care. Education is the basis for everything necessary to the creation of a just society in which all people have the opportunity to fulfill their potential and to realize their unique gifts. Education is the foundation of democracy and true freedom. Five years ago, almost to the day, this community was shaken by the death of one of our graduates, Sharonda Coleman Singleton, a speech pathologist who was killed in a hateful shooting at the Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in South Carolina. I said then, in June of 2015, that when such things happen, we often call them senseless acts of violence because the killing seems so devoid of purpose and meaning. I said then, and I say now, that because these acts are senseless does not mean that they are without cause. These killings that leave our brothers and sisters dead in the street, dead in their houses of worship, dead in their schools, dead in their homes, are caused by the social and economic inequalities in our society. They are caused by our nation's failure to be more attentive to the needs of our children, too many of whom grow up abused and uncared for. And above all, they are caused by our failure to educate our people so that they are capable of creating a culture of respect and understanding for our common humanity. The work we have done in building this university is so that each one of you, every single one of you, no matter which family you were born into, rich or poor, black, white or brown, native born or immigrant, each one of you will have the chance for the kind of education that will enable you to prepare yourself to take your place in the houses of government, in the justice system, in the healthcare system, in the financial institutions, and everywhere in society where the important decisions are made that shape our world. You need to be there. Yes, working in the hospitals, but also running the hospitals and sitting in the US Senate and making healthcare policy. Your voices and talents need to be seen and heard on the stage, in the concert halls, and in the media. Your brilliance needs to be demonstrated in the laboratory. And yes, working in the laboratory, but also running the laboratory and running the pharmaceutical corporation and making the decisions that will affect millions of lives. You need to be running the businesses that practice equitable hiring. You need to be in the rooms where housing policy is made and you need to be running more effective and more responsive social service agencies. You need to be the dedicated and effective teachers of tomorrow and to be running better school systems. That is the only way we will root out the causes behind the killing. 
Right now, your work is to take advantage of the opportunity the university offers you to work harder than you ever thought possible to get your education so that you can be part of the necessary transformation of our society and our nation. And while you are doing that, in this safe and welcoming university community, you need to practice the hard work of citizenship. You need to practice respect for each other, for those who may be or may just seem to be different than you. You need to support each other. And while you are doing that, we will keep doing our work, which is to do everything we can to support you in that effort. There are two other people I wanted to have here with me today as we talked about these things. Ernst Lozen, who is majoring in sports marketing and who is the newly elected president of the Student Government Association, and Fadia Balgahum, who is majoring in history and who has just taken her seat as the voting student trustee on the university's board of trustees. They are two of a number of student leaders who have had the courage to step up and to commit themselves to working constructively with all of you to create the programs and engage in the organizations and activities that will help you achieve all of the goals that I've been talking about. Ernst and Fadia are the future. They are you. They matter. You matter. Black lives matter. And we need to keep teaching that message until more and more and more people really understand it. We have a lot of work to do together. But how lucky are we to have this extraordinary university community where we can tackle that work together with trust and with respect. Please stay safe and well, and we really look forward to seeing you back on campus in the fall.